All right, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how you are training predominantly almost every weapon in Filipino martial arts by using one or the other. And if you kind of break it down, some people will say there are 12 sectors of Filipino martial arts in regards to weaponry or Kali. Um, sometimes people say that there's three major regions. It, it, it depends on your system, it depends on your upbringing. But I'm basically going to show you guys the similarities between weapons you probably already train with and how you can take those attributes and translate it into another one. So what I'm holding right here is a trainer Karambit. Uh, the Karambit is one of the crowd favorites. Everyone enjoys it, whether because they think it's super effective or they think it's just cool because you can flick it out and so on and so forth. Um, now there's certain things obviously a Karambit offers that a regular knife does not. But this in fact does come from a regular standard knife. And so uh, we're not gonna talk about you know where it's sharp, where it isn't sharp, and we're not gonna talk about the actual physical weapon itself, but we're going to talk more about the techniques. So, in some cases, you can use a karambit in standard grip. I've seen a, a couple, depending if it's double-edged, but most of the time you're going to have it in what's called a reverse grip or a pakal grip or an advanced grip. And it just so happens that there's a ring here to put my finger through. But where that comes from, it comes from your knife techniques having it in this exact grip here. So essentially, everything's the same. The only things that are added on is based off the curvature of this blade. So for instance, if I'm striking with my angle one, two, three, four, five, six, I can lead with either the blade or I can lead with my, uh, my thumb here and that's gonna cause a slash. So it's a puncture or a slash. But when I switch to the karambit, my slashes have to orient, a, or my thrusts rather, have to orient a certain way where I can allow the blade to actually do the work. Right, so you see here I'm leading with my thumb but it's actually going to be a thrust. And then depending on the angle, I can turn that into a slash. So there's a little bit of attribute change that I have to focus on, but the angle counts are still the same. I'm still moving the same motion. It's still close range and it's still an edged weapon. It's pretty much all you need to be able to use a karambit. Now, if you want to emphasize the karambit, now of course you can flick it out and people always say, you know, flicking is useless. And in some cases it is. In some cases you don't need to flick it if you are following the general knife mechanics that you probably already know. But what a karambit offers that this does not is, number one, I can retain my grip a little easier, okay? And when I get used to this, especially if it's dual edge, so that means it's sharp on both sides, okay? When I flick this one out, that motion, if I put my shoulder, my hip into it, that flick could be sharp enough, strong enough, that it can cause laceration. At the same time, what I can also use is, in a pakal grip or an advanced grip on a knife, this is what we normally call our hooking section here. So in between the back of the blade down to my wrist, I use that for a lot of parries, a lot of almost grappling entries. And so by having that, I can pinch down here and I can start to manipulate. With the karambit, I can do it on both my hooking section and I can do it on the front because of the curvature of the blade. So that plus the extension, I might be able to manipulate a little more in different angles you might not have seen. And that just gives me more chances to attack, more openings, and ultimately allows me to have more tools in the toolbox if I need it, when I need it, maybe I don't need it at all. So by training the knife, you are automatically learning the karambit, and it's just a matter of translating what a karambit can do that a knife can. But the knife will be your staple, and that's why it's one of those major sections that you hear about a lot if you are training Filipino martial arts, very rarely will they say, all right, pick up a karamit, let's start training. You learn the general areas of short range weapons to edge weapons. Um, then normally, when you move on to certain other criteria, you would start off with a stick, double stick, or hand to hand. Those are kind of the three that are pretty general with a lot of systems, a lot of schools that you will teach. And then the karamit is what I like to call an auxiliary weapon where it follows certain principles and attributes of the major characteristics that we teach, certain sections, but you don't have to use the karambit. This is not the only method, or this is separate from this. There's still the same thing. So, I have a stick in my hand, and I'm pretty sure you're probably thinking stick equals sword, or sword equals stick, which is very true, very, very similar. The cuts and the strikes themselves can differ a little bit, but we're not gonna get into that. What I do want to talk about is another Filipino martial arts weapon that actually a lot of people don't know is from FMA, and it's what we call the Tabak Toyok, or to the general public, the nunchucks. And you're probably thinking, how the hell does this translate to this? Now the difference is, this is a solid, flexible, but solid weapon. 
This is a flexible weapon because of the chain in between. But the techniques actually come from each other. And in fact, you'll probably see a little bit more similarities with the knife as well. But I thought I'd be able to illustrate it a little better with the stick and the tabak toyo. So I'm gonna put that down for a second. And I'll just show you a couple things I like to do. Number one, we have our basic strikes. So we have angle one, two, three, four, five, six. But also when you're training and you're getting familiar with your weapon, sometimes you'll tuck it behind here just to learn the length of your weapon, right? Maybe you'll, this is a submission in your system, whatever it might be. But techniques coming from here to here, being ambidextrous, using your left hand and your right hand, those are attributes that'll follow through into the tapak toyok, right? And then even when it comes to twirling, being able to do a tirapilon or twisting strikes, things of this nature here, this will all be translated into your tabak toyo. Snapping strikes, arco strikes, with tick strikes, that is all inside the tabak toyo. Let me show you how that's done. So, with the tabak toyo, obviously you can hold it in your left hand and your right hand at the same time. The grip that we like to use in this is almost like a slingshot. So I have one in front, one behind, and basically that's gonna allow me to whip into my angle one, my angle two, so on and so forth. So again, using my angle one and angle two, when I use the momentum of my body, I can flow. And when I do my side to side, I use my body to recoil instead of letting it you know, freeze in midair because of the chain. I would just lose all the power there. So I'd use my body for a side to side. I'd roll off my shoulders for my X pattern, my reverse X. And it's a little bit of a tweak because you can see it's a little bit more flexible, but it's still the same motion, right? So. Um, it goes further than that, your twirls, before we get to the twirls, your tirapi load, one of my favorites to do in this flow, you will li uh, leave it in the slingshot position, and then when you launch it off, you're gonna let it twirl once, and smack down. So that's one of my favorites, to go right into my flow here, switch it off, right, and be able to really hit different areas, and be able to launch it, and use the attributes from the stick, not even stick to sword. So, what I'm trying to say guys, Filipino martial arts, is uh, it's, the thought process is the real art. The weapon is just the vehicle in which you're, you're demonstrating or you're illustrating what you're trying to do. Now, of course, there's certain things a knife can do that Tabak Toyo cannot, obviously, unless this is bladed, which I would be cutting my hands right now. This cannot puncture, it cannot lacerate, but you can take the motions and apply it from a short range concept to a medium range concept to even a long range concept with a bow staff, right? Um, it could be as literal as karambit to knife, as literal as sword to stick, or it can be as distant looking as tabaktoyok to sticks or tabaktoyok to swords. So when you guys are training Filipino martial arts, remember you are not just training sticks, you are not just training empty hand, you are not just training knife. You are training a systematic process in which you're allowed to change the weapon, but the true weapon is your mind, your thought process, your ability to adapt and apply principles of combat that you would learn from Filipino martial arts. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Give it a try. Even if you have no idea what that you're doing, refer back to something you do know and see how that can be transferred in itself to another weapon. So if you did enjoy this video, guys, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. And until next time, catch you guys then.